great text from Isaiah Briscoe, who was watching it. And he said, I heard you, I watched the scrimmage, and he said, I heard you say, quit bouncing the ball, get where you're trying to get to. He said, it's the best advice you ever gave me. So I, you know, I read it to the guys and they're like, yeah, man, rationally, rationally, rationally. Anyway, don't laugh at me. <laughs> you encourage me. Questions, folks? Raise your hand for y'all. Start here from Curtis. Do you see yourself using that lineup with the three big guys? Yeah. Reed, Nick and PJ. Yep. Yep. What's PJ it? look. PJ look good at it. Part of it is PJ going against Reed is hard. It's hard to get a basket. It's hard to move. It's hard to. You know, and he found the gaps, and then he got confident, made a couple shots, and all of a sudden he's he looks different. It's hard going against it's hard going against each other every day. Tyler, everyone, Tyler, everyone, Tyler was a shooter, uh, just the way he moves. The athleticism. Has he surprised you at all? What you think? No, he's still trying to figure it out. Uh, he took some bad shots, and I had to stop him and say, "You're not taking that. Like, if that's what's there, then don't shoot it. Pass it, or move it, or." get a dribble hand if you're doing something, you're not taking that shot. But um, we're challenging him to drive the ball. So there were times he's driving when he should just catch and shoot it, or one dribble, or get, get it behind the, the handoff and shoot it. Um, but he's, uh, when he goes too far, you know, he may turn it over. There's stuff we gotta work on, but he's, he's doing pretty good. John, so much has been made about this team loving to get the gym and work on the game. In all your years of coaching, how much correlation is there between the way a team practices and success later on in the year? Well, the biggest thing I can tell you is the guys that spend the most time at this and they're in the gym the most at the end of the year end up doing the best for themselves. And if they're playing that kind of basketball, it's really good for us too. So demonstrated performance is about how hard they work and then being able to transfer it on to, to, to games. So today, in this, PJ didn't look real good the first half. It was like, oh my gosh, losing balls, missing shots, blah, 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 blah. no rebounds, didn't have a rebound. And then the second half, all of a sudden, all the work that he's been putting in, the extra work, shooting the ball, eliminating some movement in the shot, it pays off and all of a sudden now he's making shots. Jamal Baker, same thing. Jamal Baker now has been spending extra time with a coach, not himself, with a coach in that gym. Starts off one for six. Bank miss, miss. Well, he hadn't played for a year. He hadn't played for a year. And then all of a sudden he gets comfortable and then demonstrated performance kicks in and he builds his own confidence. It's not what I say or what I do or who you want to blame. It's And now all of a sudden you watch him, he's four for five in the second half. EJ. EJ told on himself. Told on himself. He didn't practice that way. If you're that good, you're practicing that way now. The team laughed like crazy. Like the combine and this game are the best two days that he's played since he's been here. Also, when there are people in the seats and there's scouts in the seats, you just take it up a notch. Really? Well, guess what, son? You're going to take it up a notch or you're going to be on that treadmill. Because that's, if that's who you are, then you're going to be that guy every day. He was good. Nick was good. Reed was good. How about Reed squaring up at 15 feet? you got to play Reed. Awesome. Kelvin was good. The two guards were good again. Emmanuel still doesn't get rid of it quick enough. He and, he and the quad A dribbled too much, held the ball too much. Get rid of it or drive it. Um, Ashton... I made him run downhill fast in the second half. It's a little bit of what we had to do with De'Aaron. If you're that fast, you're going to run that fast all the time. And then if it's not there, flare it out. But from the backcourt to that NBA line, you're flying. All the way in the back of John. you have any guys that have separated themselves in terms of burning the sides back? I don't know. I'm gonna. It's got to start happening, and um, you know, I may start one group of five, and maybe three different guys in the second half. May do that for a couple times just to feel this out and see what it looks like. Um, 
But it, it appears as though we've got 10 guys that can play, but they're going to be guys that separate themselves and play more. I had him ask the question. I went around the room and I said, uh, I said to PJ, do you want to give up any of your minutes? He said, absolutely not. How about one minute? Nope. Reed, do you want to give up? Nope. Hmm. So, quad A, do you like Jamal? Yes. Will you give him minutes? Nope. Please, someone give my minutes, some minutes to my son. And they all said, nope. So you gotta take somebody's minutes here. And if someone's better, they're gonna play more. Just how it is, not communism. We're not on the same page. And it challenges everybody to perform. And then, here's what we had, I said at halftime, we had six guys in double figures. They played 20 minutes. Six guys in double figures. Two guys had nine. And the two that didn't get in double figures, one was one for six, and the other was two for six. That ain't on us. You had the opportunity, just you didn't take advantage. So, um, you know, it's, it's th this team has, is a post-up team. It's got some length. I think we can pressure. Looks like we can shoot it pretty good. Now we're just gonna have to figure out and, and really put some groups of guys out there and get some sort of rotation where everybody's comfortable playing. Byron. John, you're obviously seeing the Port Boys in the game. This new G League option for some of the elite kids with 125,000. What do you think about that and how that affects? Well, I, I talked about it. And, and um, if, it's, if it's what they say, three or five, five guys and that's it, I don't think it affects us. As a matter of fact, it probably makes us better. The kids that come here or kids that want the competition and want to get better. They're not going somewhere so they're the only guy to shoot all the balls and do all that. They don't come here. I think this may, may even separate us some. So I'm not worried about it. My concern comes back to, I want to know what happens to the kids that you've encouraged not to go to college if they fail. What are you going to do for them? That's my whole thing. What is it going to do to eighth and ninth and 10th graders? Are you going to have a whole wave of those kids that think, I don't need school, I'm going to go to the G League? What they're doing, I just don't, I, I looked at it and said, this is going to help us. We weren't getting those guys anyway. They weren't going to come here, the guys that would do that. The guys that come here, they, they come here for a reason. Here on the left. Coach, it seemed like the team was pretty active trying to block shots tonight. Yeah. I think Nick blocked three in the first few minutes of the second half. You mentioned you want to see them block yes. more shots. Are you seeing that? Yes. I, uh, block shots. We had 11 block shots between them. Eight, eight from that group because uh, Nick had five. Uh, EJ had one. I thought he had more. So, you know, we had eight. 11 total. EJ and PJ, I'd like him, and even Reed if he can get a hand on one or two. Now, what's your favorite thing about the new version of Nick Richards? What do you like most about what he's That he's, he has a smile. He's looking up. He doesn't look like, you know, shuffling his feet, looking down. He's, he's confident in who he is and what he does. Um, there's no, what I, what I keep saying to the kids, you know, you guys know, that, and I've said this if, you, if you've listened, most of you don't, but where I talked about hate turns into fear. So I don't try to get my kids to hate another team or another coach, hate that guy. We hate them. They get all, we don't do that here. Because hate turns into fear in, within your body, physiology. Well, the other one is anxiety and excitement. They hooked your body up and it was anxiety or excitement, the doc would say, well, you're either anxious or you're excited. I don't know which one, but it's one of the two. And so my thing is, if that's what the case is, then you would challenge your own mind to be more excited than anxious. You would be excited about getting shots. You've missed two, I'm excited about the next one. I'm not worried I'm gonna miss this one. You're excited about shooting game winners. You're excited about trying to make five in a row, or you could be anxious. And so we've been talking a lot about that to get guys in the right frame of mind. They've got to get themselves in there. And when they feel anxious, flip that switch and get to being excited. Jerry, last one. John, uh, John Tate Porter of Missouri tore an ACL and MCL today in a scrimmage. I wonder what you, just a reaction to when something like that happens. You just, 
I haven't eaten yet, and now I'm nauseous. I mean, you know, it's uh, fate intervenes many times in what we do, and you just, you know, I can't even. I, I remember getting on the bus when Nerlens blew his knee out, and we were coming back from Florida, and we knew he did it. And I got on, he was on the plane, and he was okay, and I went up to him, and I hugged him, and he just started bawling. Just, I mean, literally bawling. And I'm telling him, you're going to be fine. This is going to kill our team. You, and I told him the truth. He was dressed at seven. We ended up going to the NIT and lo losing to Robert Morris, which somebody said, to you, one guy you lost to? I mean, this... I've been there. I've, I've, oof. You know, my thoughts and prayers go to him and his family. And, yeah, it's awful. All right, folks, we're going to.